Good day students, welcome to math.serve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over problems 21 to 24 of the Algebra 1 Common Core Regents exam for January 2015. All right, let's take a look at problem 21. It reads, an astronaut drops a rock off the edge of a cliff on the moon. The distance d of t in meters the rock travels after t seconds can be modeled by the function d of t equals 0.8 t squared. What is the average speed in meters per second of the rock between 5 and 10 seconds after it was dropped? So whenever you're calculating average speed, um, given two values, what you want to think of first is slope, okay? That's how you calculate the average speed. So think back to your slope formula. It's also included in the reference sheet. To calculate the slope, um, slope is rise over run, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So you might wonder, where is x2 x1 and y2, y1 in this problem. Well, x1 and x2 are staring at you somewhere in this problem. In y2 and y1, you have to find, okay? So x's are your independent variable or your inputs. Since you have the function d of t, um, can you determine what your, your independent variable is? Your independent variable is t. Okay, so t is just like your x's. Okay, so your first t is your x1 and your second t is your uh, x2. So think of x1 as being the first t, which is 5, and x2 as your second t, which is 10. All right, now how do you find your y's? How do you get your outputs? You get your outputs by plugging in your inputs into the function, right? So your y1 is what you get when you input x1 into the function. So y1 is basically d of 5, which is x1. All right? Can you determine what y2 is? y2 is simply what you get when you plug in x2 into the function, which is d of what? d of 10. So we're given x1 and x2. We're simply going to determine y1 and y2 by plugging these two values into the function, okay? And then we'll be good to go. Now let's find out what um, y1 is or d of 5. So d of 5 is equal to 0 0.8 times 5 raised to the second power. Okay, so here you can use your calculator. If you're doing this by hand, you have to make sure that you use your order of operations correctly. You have to square this first before you multiply. So you have 0 0.8 times 25. And then if you multiply 0 0.8 by 25, you end up with 20. Okay? All right. And then we need uh, y2, which is d of uh, 10. You input x2 into the function. So you're going to have 0 0.8 times what? 0 0.8 times 10 raised to the second power. All right? Using your order of operations again, we square this first. You do exponents first before you multiply. 0 0.8 times 10 times 10 is 100. And then we'll get um, 80. Okay? as the height after 10 seconds. All right, now we have everything that we need. Now we're going to find the average speed. Average speed. <clears throat> Remember, I told you it's just a slope, right? The average speed is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. In this problem, y2 is d of what? We talked about that earlier, d of 10 d of 10 minus y1 is d of 5 divided by uh, x2, which is 10, minus x1, which is 5. Okay, so that's your 
formula. So to finish this off, we'll simply input the values that we determined for d of 10. d of 10 is 80 minus d of 5 is 20 divided by 10 minus 5 is 5. 80 minus 20 is 60. 60 over 5 is 12. Okay? So your average speed is 12, um, I believe is, is it feet? The unit for distance here is meters. So it's 12 meters per second. All right, so that's your average speed. Our answer is option number one. Okay, let's take a look at number 22. It reads, when factored completely, the expression p to the fourth minus 81 is equivalent to, so in this problem, you, your um, ability to apply the difference of squares factorization algorithm is being assessed here, okay? So what is the difference of squares factorization um, formula? If you have a square minus b square, a square, remember, minus a square called difference of squares. The factored form involves you simply taking the square root of the two squares and um, expressing them as a sum and difference, okay? So a square minus b square can be factored into a plus b quantity times quantity a minus b, okay? So that's the factored form. Now let's go ahead and um, apply to this situation right here. We have p to the fourth minus 81. Now is p to the fourth a square? Absolutely, anything with an even power is a square. And is 81 a square? Certainly because nine times nine gives us 81. 81 is a perfect square. So we can apply this um, formula to this situation here, okay? So how do we factor it? We take the square root of the first term and the square root of the last term, and then we express the factored form as a sum and difference of the square roots, okay? So let's step over to the side here. What is the square root of p to the fourth? When you're taking the square root, all you're doing is simply dividing the power by two. So it's gonna be p to the second power. Okay, I will know the square root of 81 is 9 because 9 times 9 is 81. So that's the square root of the two terms. So we're going to express this factored form as the sum and difference of these two values here. So we're going to have p square plus 9 times p square minus 9. Remember the sum and the difference. So is our answer option number 1. Absolutely not. That's not the answer. We were asked to factor completely. So what does that mean? Anytime you apply the difference of squares factorization algorithm, you want to ask yourself, did I end up with a difference of squares as one of my factors? And if he, the answer is yes, that means you have to apply the difference of squares algorithm again to one of your factors, whichever is the difference of squares, to factor completely, okay? So if you look at these two factors here, these two quantities, the first factor is a sum of squares. This is prime. You cannot factor it, okay? But take a look at this right here. This is another difference of squares. It fits the a square minus b square format. So what does that mean? We can factor this again by applying the difference of squares factorization algorithm. So we take the square root of the first term and the square root of the last term, and then you find the sum and difference of the square root of those two terms, okay? All right, let's step to the side again. What is the square root of p square? Square root of p square is just p to the first power, which you can write as p, and the square root of 9, which is a perfect square, is 3, okay? So we're going to be writing the sum and difference of these two. So bring down p squared plus 9. This is prime because of the plus. This one factors further into p plus 3 times p minus 3. 
And that's the complete factorization of P to the fourth minus 81. Your answer is option number three. All right, let's take a look at problem 23. It says, in 2013, the United States Postal Service charged 46 cents to mail a letter weighing up to one ounce and 20 cents per ounce after each additional ounce. Which function would determine the cost in dollars, C of Z, of mailing a letter weighing Z ounces where Z is an integer greater than one. All right, so um, let's go ahead and generate a pattern of costs to help us see how we can generalize um, the situation to have a cost function for determining the cost for million um, Z ounces of mail, okay? So let's start with one ounce. What is the uh, cost of mailing one ounce. If you want to mail one ounce, cost a million one ounce. It says here, the USPS charges 46 cents to mail letters weighing up to one ounce. So for one ounce, it's simply 46 cents, 0 0.46. Think about this as the flat rate, okay? So 46 cents. Now, when you exceed one ounce, something kicks in for each additional ounce so for c of two what happens for each additional ounce um you you charge 20 cents per ounce so um in addition to the 46 cents so for um two ounces you're going to have the base rate 46 cents plus 0 0.2 times what 0 0.2 times the number of ounces above one ounce. So two ounces is one unit above one ounce, right? So it's going to be um, 0 0.2 times one, all right? We can rewrite this as 0 0.46, the base rate, plus 0 0.2 times the number of ounces above one, two, minus one, okay? So this is the cost. Now let's move on to the next um, weight. C of three, three ounces, what will that be? It's going to be the base rate, 0.46 cents, I mean 46 cents or 0.46 dollars plus 0 0.2 times how many ounces above one is three. Three minus one is two. Or you can express this as 0 0.46 plus 0 0.2 times three minus one. All right, I color coded my uh, inputs here uh, so you can clearly see um, what's happening with the model. Now, this is going to help us to create a general case okay so let's go ahead and generalize here well, how much will it cost to mail z ounces okay how much will it cost to mail z ounces so you notice that for two we did two minus one which gives us one for three we did three minus one which gives us two so for z what do you think we're going to do the flat rate 0 0.46 stays the same. The ounce, uh, the cost per ounces above t one stays the same. So what goes here? You just simply do this computation. It's going to be Z, the number of ounces minus one, right? And that will be the cost of um, mailing a mail that weighs Z ounces. So let's see, oh, we can use, since addition commutes, we can um, rewrite this as 0 0.2 times Z minus one plus 0 0.46. So it's consistent with the options we have here. And we can clearly see that our answer is option number four. 
All right, let's take a look at uh, the last multiple choice problem, number 24. It says, a polynomial function contains the factors x, x minus 2, and x plus 5. Which graphs below could represent the graph of this function? Okay, so we have three factors. That means we're going to have three roots. Since the factors are dissimilar, we are going to have three different roots, okay? So let's take a look at these options that we have here. Option number one has three roots. The first root is, um, this is one, two, three, four, five, right here. So the first root is negative five. There's another root here, which is zero. And then the next root is one, two. Sorry, my um, grid is not perfectly aligned here. So this is two. So here you have three roots, which are um, negative five, zero, and two. Good, because we have three factors. So this is a candidate, it's a potential candidate. Uh, over here, what do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five. One root is negative five, and one, two, Another root is positive 2. This has only two roots, negative 5 and 2. This is no good because we need to have three roots because we have three factors here. In this case, we have 1, 2. The first root is negative 2. The second root is 0. And the third root, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, is positive 5. Okay, so your roots here are negative 2, 0 and 5. So remember your roots are your x intercepts, not your y intercept. Like here, this is a trap. You have your y intercept here. Uh, that's not a root. Okay? Your roots are where the graph cuts the x axis. So you have 1, 2, 3 for the letter 1. And then this one just has 2. That's why we eliminated it. And then this one has three roots negative 2, 0, and 5. So we've eliminated option two. Which is the correct answer? Is it option one or option three? Can we just look at the factors here and automatically determine what the uh, roots are? The answer is no, don't do that. Um, if you have the factors, these are not the roots, okay? So if you have the factors, you simply know that x times x minus two times x plus 5, the product of the factors equal to 0 can help you find the roots of the polynomial function. All right, so we have to solve this first in order to know what the correct answer is. So how do we solve this? We use a zero product property. We set each factor equal to 0 and solve. Okay, so we have x equals 0, x minus 2 equals 0, and x plus 5 equals 0. Now, the first one is already solved for us, so we know that 0 is one of the roots. That's good. And then, um, let's take a look at the next factor. You just add 2 to both sides here. And then you have your second root. x is equal to make a positive 2. Oh, we can clearly see that option 1 is our answer. And then the last one, subtract 5 from both sides. And that yields x is equal to negative 5. So the polynomial should have zeros at 0. Oh, let's put it in order, in ascending order. So the smallest root is negative 5. So the root should be negative 5, 0, and 2. And that matches only with option number 1. So option 1 is our correct answer. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. We'd like to know what you think about this clip. If you liked it um, or were able to learn a lot from it, please give us a thumbs up so we'll be motivated to do more tutorials like this. Uh, do not forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to other uh, cool tutorials such as this and also for the next um, installments of this review series. Please visit our website at mathgoodserve.com for access to other great math tutorials. Thanks again.